quilters. Today's video is on quilting quickly and I picked a panel that is behind me and I've decided to do it because it just needs some borders added and binding and quilting. And so I picked the, the panel is one that I had in my stash and the reason that I've started doing a little bit of the quicker stuff right now at the Christmas season is because I I live in a different country than my children, so to send something to them takes a little bit of time. So it's got to get out pretty soon in November for it to reach them by Christmas. Uh, the mail runs a little bit slower here. So that is my theme for this. So that was what I picked. Um, I ended up, I had originally thought that I was only going to use a walking foot with it, but I ended up adding a little bit more quilt, quilting along the borders because I just felt that it needed a little bit more. So it had both done. It's, uh, it's been a process quilting this. I thought it was gonna be incredibly quick and I had my machine break down right in the middle of it. So that slowed me down a little bit. I'm nursing my machine on until it's time for me to move. So um, that's how that's going with me. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. The project is fairly simple and I started by choosing these fabrics from my fabric stash. I'm opening up this panel so that you can see it. This will be my featured panel as I'm quilting. Every now and then, a pre-printed fabric can give you a jump on the progress of your project. You have a much lower investment in time in putting the quilt together than if you had spent weeks or even months piecing your quilt top. Let me tuck this away for now and let's talk about the other ones. I already had these two and a half inch strips cut from a different project. They are going to be perfect for the inner border of this project. The holly fabric is going to be used for the binding, so I'll cut this up and I'll make the binding from this. And the red fabric is going to be my outer border fabric. I was hoping I would have enough of this to also back the quilt, but I don't think that, I think I'm gonna be just short of what I need to do that. So I may have to choose something else as the backing. One of the benefits that comes from quilting a pre-printed panel, if you happen to be a beginner, is that there will be lots of elements that you can trace with your stitches or you can echo with your stitches as you're practicing. If you've spent weeks or months in the piecing of a quilt top, then you're much more likely to send it off to a professional quilter or a professional long armor to get the piece finished for you. So what this is great for a beginner because uh, you can practice it, you can go around lots of elements. With this red fabric, one of the things to note is that I'm making the cuts on the width of the fabric. This means that the folded line is on the straight of grain or the length of the fabric. I want to line it up exactly with one of the lines on the cutting mat along the bottom. And this should make for perfectly straight strips of fabric. What you don't want is a little L-shaped curve in right along the fold of your fabric. So if you take some time and you line it up along the, the bottom line of your cut, then you should be good. One other thing to notice is that this is a very wide piece of fabric. You might notice that I have little pieces of bandage so, showing through on the ruler that I'm cutting with. These are next care bandages. They're right out of my first aid kit. And they have a kind of spongy texture on the the part of them that would be facing outward if you were using them as a bandage and this keeps my ruler from sliding while I'm making my cuts. The part of the ruler that's closest to your hand is less likely to slide but the further away from your hand you get when you're cutting the more likely you are to have the ruler slip. So these are very helpful for that. You want to save your fabric and you don't want to make any mistakes. The holly fabric is not nearly as wide so I'm going to have to make six cuts to get the appropriate amount of fabric for my fabric strips for the binding. Now that your fabric is cut, the next thing will be attaching the borders to the edges of your panel. So all you're going to be doing is going around and sewing these on. I've made this very simple because I've just butted everything together uh, instead of trying to miter the corners. And then you'll go into pressing it and you just want to press each piece down as you're sewing it. Now you want to move into attaching your outer border and it's the same process. You're just going around and you're butting your edges together. So I put on two sides and then I will put on the top and the bottom and in that way 
it will match up as easy as possible. As you're moving around your fabric panel, you want to come back every time you make a seam and press it. Binding is generally the last thing that you will need to do when you're making your quilt. But while I have my machine set up for straight stitch sewing, I'm going to go ahead and set up my binding. And the way that I'll do this is you just have to press along. And I will be using Elmer's washable school glue. I will fold down a corner. And this is with the inside of the fabric facing toward me. And I'll fold down a corner and I'll add a little bead of glue and then I'll add another piece of fabric and I just lay it right on top and its right side is going to be down so the inside of the fabric is going to be facing me and then I'll press it. The iron will heat set the glue and then I'll take it over to the machine. Once I've heat set the fabric I'm going to bring it over to the machine and I'm going to sew along the press line where um, the crease is and then I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to press, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to clip the threads. And once I've clipped the threads, I'm going to go over to the little triangle area and I'm going to pop these two fabrics apart right down to the seam line. And it's going to have a little bit of strength to it. You'll be surprised how much that, that heat set glue will hold really well. So once you've popped those two fabrics apart, then you're going to trim them with your scissors and you're going to take them back over to the iron. And, um, oh, and I did these just at an approximate a quarter of an inch. So then you take them back over to your iron and you're going to press that down. This is how you get your diagonal joins on your binding. And the reason that you'll do this is to give you less bulk when you join these to your quilt. Now that you have all of these joined into one long strip of binding, you'll take them over to your ironing board and you'll press this long strip in half all the way down. After you finish quilting your quilt, you're going to attach this to the edges of your quilt and this will be the binding. It's known as a double fold French binding. So now for just a minute, let's consider the quilting of the quilt. I've got my backing, my batting, and my quilt top put together, and I've gridded it out. So I've just went down with my walking foot, and what the walking foot does is it gives a grip to the top of your fabric. Your feed dogs will do it on the bottom of your machine, and uh, this will add an extra layer of, to, to your presser foot, so it gives it a little bit more power as you go along. So anyway, when I do something like this, I set my presser foot pressure way down from what it normally is. And that's according to the manufacturer's instructions for my machine. Yours may be different, but mine, you do a manual setting, and so you figure it out. Anyway, I've picked some lines that were already on my quilt, and I've used them as a guideline for where I'm going to sew. You're going to have to have a really high tolerance for turning your quilt many, many times. Um, I will suggest that you use some gloves that have grippers on, um, like the little rub rubber grippers on them, and that will help you to hold on to your fabric as you're sewing, because it will get tiring after a while. You can also roll your fabric, and this will make it a lot easier as you're going around, at least in a couple of directions. So this is something that you might try also. I ended up adding a little bit of free motion quilting around the borders of the quilt. I had originally only planned on doing straight line quilting, but I felt that it needed a little bit more than what I had originally planned when I got close to the end of it. Now when you get to the point of your quilt where you're trimming off the edges, this is a very satisfying quilt. Not just because it makes it look so much straighter, but also it just makes it a little bit easier to handle when you take off a little bit of the bulk. So this is the last step as far as this goes. The, uh, the next thing that I'll be doing with this, the, the quilting is done, and I will add a sleeve to the back so that it can be hung, because this one is definitely meant to be hung. It's not meant to be a bed, bed quilt for an infant. Anyway, the next step will be the sleeve, and then I will tuck the sleeve under the binding, and then I'll finish up the binding, and I'll be done. 
As a rule, I don't do a lot of hand stitching, but this is one place where I do. You'll see down at the bottom edge, I have where my hand is, the, the raw edge of the sleeve, and it lines up with, it butts up against the raw edge of the fabric. So all of this will be tucked under the binding on that side. On the top side, the stitch that I'm taking goes into the quilt sandwich. It doesn't go all the way to the front. You're just taking a little stitch along the fabric at the back, and then you're going into the fold of this uh, sleeve. This will make it really invisible stitch that you can hardly see. Now, it might not even matter. You might be happy with a whip stitch at the back because people just don't look at the back of your quilt, especially when it's hung as a banner. If you're wondering why I'm using hand stitching at all, the reason why is because if I were to use machine stitching, it would go all the way through the fabric to the front and it would mess up the look of the quilting on the front of the quilt. When you get to the end and you flip it over, you can see that you have no additional marks on the front that will show through to, to the front of your quilt. After you've got the sleeve along, you start your binding process. And what you'll do is you'll have your raw edges of your binding and your raw edges of your quilt and everything will line up and you will just go around the edges of your quilt doing the binding. I've put the binding first on the back side of the quilt and as you notice, it flips over perfectly and makes a lovely little miter at the back. And it will also make a really nice miter at the front, as you can see here. So I flipped it over and you can see what the front will look like and it'll miter perfectly on the front also. You'll see here that the process is exactly the same when you're working on the front of the quilt, putting the binding on. I've used a few clips just to hold things in place as I go and I will sew it on. I I prefer the, the clips when I'm working on something like this that's big and bulky because if I'm working with pins, I'll end up with them sticking in me instead of sticking in the, the quilt. So now as you're attaching the top side of the binding, your emphasis is really just on getting a nice straight stitch as you go through. You want to get it as close to the edge of the binding as possible without, um, you know, going off. And so the, the main thing here is just to be patient while you're doing it. So my finished product is here. I'm very pleased with this quilt. Um, let me open it up. It took a little bit of time to get it done. I, like I said at the beginning, I had a few distractions along the way with my machine. But anyway, top to bottom, I'm pleased with it. So what I ended up doing is I just did straight line stitching. I picked a few places and I did straight line stitching and I put some emphasis in here and I actually did just a, an X in the middle. Now I know that there is opportunity here to trace around the numbers or the little figures that were in here or any number of things. But I decided I really, really wanted to keep this simple. I did the same thing here. I just did little X's across my quilt. And um, I just marked along at even spaces so it would be evenly spaced. And then I went from, did a zigzag across in both directions. Um, where I added on, and this is where I ran into trouble, was my machine that was upstairs on my frame. Ended up breaking down. but. Anyway, I did get finished, but it was uh, I was gonna free motion it really quick on the quilt frame, and then I ended up waiting for the machine to be fixed before I came back to it. Um, it's always quick to do the binding. That's never a complaint. And I don't know if the back will show. You can see, you can see the grid that I laid out first, which was my original intent with just straight line quilting, and then I ended up adding on to it around, mostly around the edges. So that is how this ended up. I did put a sleeve on it, so uh, it can be hung. This one is going to be a gift, so I always want, if I'm planning on sending a Christmas gift to, to one of my daughters, I want to make sure that they can hang it up especially if it's just for the season, because I know this is not gonna be on the bed, it's way too small, but it's a good size to go on a wall. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more compulsive quilting and embroidery videos.